Greetings today from Botswana. A little bit ago, I did a short called Jesus Was Rejected. It was just kind of pointing out briefly, obviously with a short, some of the ways in which Jesus was rejected during his fleshly ministry when he was here on earth. But I really felt a need to expand on this a little bit because I think there might be someone who needs a word of encouragement for what they are going through. These are the end times and things are not going to be very good. But I think unfortunately too often, people are looking at Jesus as just someone who was always loved, always accepted. And today, many in many circles, Christians are viewed that they should be this way also. And we just can't be that way if we are to be like our savior. Anyway, I wanna start by reading Isaiah 53, three, part of the prophecy of Jesus coming. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. This is a very important prophecy of our Lord. And we need to know that if we are going to be like our Lord, then we will be despised. We will be rejected, at least at times. <clears throat> but unfortunately, many times it is looked at that as Christians, we will get along with everyone, we will be well-liked, and if we are not well-liked, then it is somehow our fault. Sometimes this happens within churches, and that's where it really hurts. When you're seeing all of these people that you consider to be good Christians, but they are really not holding in faith, you know, what uh, the kind of lives that they should be. And in the end, you get criticized for not being in unity, uh, un unjustly judging your brother and whatnot. And so we want to get past that. I just want to look a little bit in a little bit more detail than I can go into in a one minute video. For example, as we see when Jesus came to Gadarenes, Gadarenes is where he cast out the man who had the legion of devils. You know that in the end that the people just, they said, Jesus, get out of here. Please go, go. They weren't just, it doesn't say they were disrespectful. They had some fear. But indeed, though he had done a great work of deliverance on a man with devils, they would prefer for Jesus to leave rather than to take care of anything uh, otherwise. They were definitely calling evil good and good evil. And this is a, a classic case of how Jesus was not always loved and accepted. Another one that I wanted to point out was just from Luke chapter 4. When Jesus was in his hometown, it says he came to Nazareth, Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Guess what? He began to read from the scripture. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he said, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. These people did not want to accept this. They remember Jesus as someone who had grown up among them, the son of a carpenter, and they did not want to accept it. They wanted him to do miracles, but he would not do them for them. He said that no prophet has any honor in his hometown. And you might, be, you might remember the end result of this, and that is that they drove him out of the synagogue and tried to throw him off a cliff. That doesn't sound very loving, does it? But I'm just trying to point out, if the perfect God of creation who died for our sins was receiving such treatment, what can we expect to receive? As we read again in Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 through 20 and 25, Jesus said, a servant is not above his Lord. If they have called the, they have called the Lord Beelzebub, then what will they call those of his house? And yes, you might remember that Jesus was casting out devils and they said, he's doing it by the power of the devil. Again, I want you to remember, I will have scriptures listed uh, in the description below so that you can look through them at your leisure. And though it isn't just here, I like to emphasize the book of John, which really tells us a lot about Jesus uh, and his rejection. You know, his rejection began in chapter 5 when he had healed a man on the Sabbath day. And then the leaders, the religious leaders were wanting to stone him because he had worked on the Sabbath day. 
That was pretty petty, wasn't it? But this is, it doesn't just stop there. You can look in John chapter 6, verse 66. It says, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. You can read in chapter 7, verse 1. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. Now, we know that they weren't going to be able to kill him until the set time and in the set way that God had provided for. But it is still the idea, and it was well known. In chapter 7, verse 7, Jesus testified that the world hated him because he was testifying of the world that its works were evil. So you see, if we're following our Lord by example, the world is going to hate us. Certainly somewhere along the line, it's going to hate us. Satan is not going to allow us to live in peace for the God that he hates and rebelled against. And again, as we see in chapter 7, verse 25, they're talking about Jesus said, Then said some of them of Jerusalem, Is not this he whom they seek to kill? Yes, it was they, he whom they sought to kill. I see this again as we go to John chapter 10, verse 31. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. And they were still, even though Jesus kind of talked, to, talked his way around that, they were still seeking to take him. And of course, their intent all along then was to put him to death. We see this as we go into John 11. As Jesus was saying that he wanted to go and to see Lazarus, this was after he was sick and he had waited some days. His disciples responded, Master, the Jews of late have sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? His disciples knew that it was a dangerous situation. And of course, Thomas, Thomas Didymus, said, Let us go also, that we may die with him. Did Thomas know that this was a serious situation? Did the disciples know? Yes, they knew. You see, Jesus did a lot of great things, but the people did not accept him, you know, in great masses. The Bible has said, you know, that broad is the path to destruction. In Matthew 11, verse 20, Bethsaida and Chorazin, the cities where Jesus had done most of his mighty works, he was rebuking them because they had not repented. In other words, they took all these good things Jesus would do for them, but they wouldn't turn from their sins. He was still being rejected for who he was and for who and for what he was teaching. And this is important to remember. And again, back to John 11, even in verse 53, from that day forth, they took counsel together for to put him, that is Jesus, to death. And so I just want you to know this. I mean, both my wife and I have experienced this down through the years, and this might have been some reason why. At a point, the Lord had led us aside from organized churches, denominations, and such, because there is such a press, such a force to, to be in unity, and to be in unity with leaders who, frankly, aren't following the Word of God to start with. But we had experienced this, both of us, in our youth, where we were seeing things that were problems. But when we mentioned them to those who were elder, who should have been wiser and more dedicated to Christ, we were rebuked, we were put in our places, for saying anything because we needed to be supportive of the behavior no matter how inappropriate it was. I only want to encourage people for today and for the days ahead. Just because you are in contention with someone doesn't mean that you aren't following the Lord. As a matter of fact, you read in places like Matthew 5, 11, or I think it's uh, Luke 6, 22 and 23, when you are persecuted or reviled for Jesus' sake, you know, that we should leap for joy. I've actually told my wife to remind me that when this comes along again, uh, and I'm feeling the stress that she should just remind me of this verse so that I could actually leap for joy just in obedience, not because I'll feel like it. But I want you fellow believers out there to take a stand for the Lord according to his word. And that's going to put you in contention with a lot of people who profess the name of Christ, but really aren't living it. Just know that Jesus faced this contention, and we will be just like him. Satan is not going to allow us to live a peaceful, holy life here on earth. Yes, it is time, there are times we are told to seek peace, but the devil is not going to allow that, and we must stand up for what is true. So take courage, brethren. This will be accomplished by your fellow brethren throughout the world, 
The end is soon to come and we will soon be with our Lord. May God bless.